Twitch, the live stream service popular with gamers, has changed its rules to allow nudity. The revamp has come about after users complained the platform's regulations around sexual content were confusing. So now, as long as the nudity can be deemed artistic, it will be permitted. That includes twerking and pole dancing, but <laughs> pornographic content is still banned. So the thing that breaks my heart about this entire debacle is the fact that Twitch is a platform that is used by minors. And most of them simply come there to watch their favorite streamers play video games or they just come to enjoy video games themselves. And then all of a sudden, I'm going live on Twitch and I'm going to be doing the topless challenge, except you get to know what's underneath here. And every time someone subs, I have to flex and I have to clap. But now I have auto tracking. The other girls, they have to sit and be still. <laughs> it's like a video game character. <sighs> Safe version of Baldur's Gate. <laughs> I was just not expecting that to look at that when I open up the screen. Children! Think of the children! Think of the children! Chill out, dude. Okay, that's you, you don't have to shame out you. Shame out. The entire feed is now littered with prawn stars of all shapes and sizes. And the unfortunate part of it all is this will be the first introduction to prawn to most minors, thanks to this little slip up that Twitch did. And to have the temerity to issue out a statement after the backlash saying that you guys completely had no idea that this was going to happen, it was an unforeseen circumstance. My favorite part of this, and this is what I want to get tattooed on my body, while I wish we could have predicted this outcome, part of our job is to make adjustments that serve the community. Bro, you don't have to be Nostra fucking Domus to figure that out. Is honestly extremely baffling and also really stupid. Thanks to Twitch and their artistic nudity policy, most young men and women will go on to have long term repercussions thanks to prawn brought to you by the extreme negligence and stupidity of the Twitch platform. Girl? I don't know you, but my pheromones remember you. Gaming is dead, guys. <laughs> I'm sorry to say, but gaming is dead. <laughs> gaming has been infiltrated by by PDFs. This <laughs> How else would you explain this? I know what kind of man you are. Oh, strange emotions. Tell me about it. Wasn't expecting you to come in fun size. Oh my god! Fun size? Fun size! Who comes up with this nonsense? <laughs> Gaming has been infiltrated by PDFs, people! This is so disturbing! This is so disgusting! What executive? Who is in charge? <laughs> Who is in charge of this nonsense? My god! You really don't know me? Harley and Ivy forever? In 10 story burning letters? Say, hold up. Wait a minute. That ain't right. Harley and Ivy forever? In 10 story burning letters? Go ahead and take a seat. But I'm not gonna do this. Take a seat right over there. What are you doing here? There is simply too many problems with this footage, man. The first problem that I can think about is, okay, wait, Harley and Ivy are a thing, how? How are they a thing? This game comes after Arkham Knight. In Arkham Knight, Poison Ivy died. So where would you guys have found the time? Second point, why does she look like Greta Thunberg? Guy, you can, you can show this picture side by side to anybody who doesn't even know who Greta Thunberg is. They will tell you that these people, there's a resemblance here. You're telling me that there is, there wasn't a single person on the developing team who was like, you know what guy, this girl seems to resemble 
Greta Thunberg and Greta Thunberg's politics may not necessarily be the right type of politics what we're trying to do here. Maybe we should try and revamp her or change her up a little bit, you know. But no, it's fine, it's fine. And then of course, the most obvious and egregious problem here or issue is the face model for this little poison ivy has to be from a child. This is a child's face and you're talking to a child in a very sexual manner. I just want to talk to him. Wait, why do you have a shotgun? I just want to talk to him. Dad, this is ridiculous. I just want to talk to him. I just want to talk to him. I just want to talk to him. I just want to shoot him. And then, of course, the third problem is this one guy said if diminishing returns was a person. And, uh, I mean, I know one is hyper extreme, but I can't help but think it's at least in one extreme. The women actually look like women. That's all I can say about that. And then, of course, check out their Twitter bio guy. A company that has this type of politics simply should tell you everything you need to know about them and their future projects and who is in charge and where their loyalties and priorities lie. This should tell you everything you need to know. This is what you're going to expect from Rocksteady here on out. The Rocksteady that we grew up with, that we loved, that gave us all the Arkham games, that Rocksteady is dead and gone. This is the new reality, and this is what we're supposed to actually just get used to. How do you do that? How do you do that? Out of all these leaks though, the most concerning comes from PlayStation. By 2027, they plan an increase in the price of their games to $100. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? And this could very well start another video game market crash. PlayStation 1 to hike their price up to $100 is just completely nuts. In 2027, they do plan on releasing their next-gen PlayStation console, but this still doesn't change the fact that paying $100 for a video game is bonkers. Especially when you look at the price gap between previous console generations. PlayStation 1 and PlayStation 2 games went for around $50 at launch. PlayStation 3 and PS4 games at launch cost around $60, and the PS5 games cost $70. Over a 25 year period, between the time the PlayStation 1 released and the start of the current generation of consoles, we only saw a price increase of around $20, give or take. So, seeing that an increase of a potential $30 is coming just over a seven year period is unbelievable. But wait, there's more. But you might even be paying more than that for first party games because a part of the information leaked out about Sony says that they plan on releasing Spider-Man 3 in three parts, selling each part for $50 US. D. Overall, you will be paying a hundred and fifty dollars. I mean, let's, let's not take the piss here. For a game, and even more if you're Canadian. This is one thousand times worse than a video game developer removing content from their main game to sell it as DLC. Why would you do? We're in the end game now. Uh, the one thing, I know you were talking about the, the character from a bygone era. Uh, I do think the character model was actually like very distracting in not a good way because like the, with the camera angles chosen, it just felt like this game seems like a, a game that came out in like 002 in terms of its, you know, like character design. It's like a bit old and, and not flattering, I don't think, for a modern audience. Shut up, bitch! In comparison to something like Forspoken, which has, you know, uh, I mean, yes, it has a much more realistic looking character designs. Uh, it's not these hyper proportioned uh, something or another's, but it also seemed, I don't know, a bit more grounded in a way that I found much more appealing than. And Shift Up themselves was like, hey, can y'all shut the fuck up about our character model? Because everybody keeps saying she's she's uh, disproportionate. There's, she's not realistic to today's standards. And they literally had to drop on their on they Twitter account. That bitch. Our motherfucking model is real. <laughs> She's a real girl. She's a real woman. And people were upset. People were upset that they cracked the model look like that. So they literally showed the woman that models their character in game. And like, bitch, she's built like this. So if y'all don't like that we have beautiful women modeling for our game, 
Go somewhere the fuck else. I love the gang. I love the hustle, man. Hey, Casey. You putting me in charge. Why now? Look, Anderson. You're a better detective than I am. You've cracked cases that had the rest of us baffled. I don't want to slow you down. There's this running trope that female characters, especially in movies, always need to be validated and told how amazing they are by their male counterparts. You were just a child when the TVA took you, but you nearly took down the organization that claims to govern the order of time. You did it on your own. You had rings around them. You're amazing. And I truly don't understand why. I want to steel man this thing to the best of my abilities. Perhaps what they're trying to say is that it's it's supposed to come off as more of a recommendation letter. Just telling the audience that this person is good for the job, you, you, you're gonna like her, I vouch for her so that should mean something, you know, I'm a legacy character so that should mean something, you know. Perhaps it's a way to simply get the audience to buy into this new character that will probably be taking the mantle from here forth, you know. Maybe that is what they're trying to do. But then my problem or my issue with this thing is the fact that why is it done so poorly? Especially when the new character has no development, we don't know them, we didn't get to spend time with them, they showed up of the blue, they are amazing at everything, better than the legacy characters themselves, and the legacy characters standing there being like, yeah, I vouch for her, so you should too. Get the fuck out of here. It's lazy, man. It's just, it comes off as lazy writing. You couldn't just take, I don't know, an extra year or so and just develop this new character that you want us to be, to be bought into. Just take your time with her, develop her, give her a story structure, give her motivations, give her struggles, give her challenges, make her realistic. That's how you get the audience to buy into a new character that you're bringing into. That's why we love Miles Morales, even though Insomniac right now is screwing him over. But Miles Morales, people love him because he has his own story he has struggles he has villains he has issues he's complex he didn't show out of the blue one day and spider-man is like you know what miles you're better than me. you're a better spider-man guy you've always been and you're just awesome so take over just do the job and if you notice all wokeness is it usually comes down to lazy writing they don't want to put the time in they don't want to they don't want to put the the hard work in so they just take the easy way out they cut in corners that's what it is. They're just cutting corners. The Saints Row reboot was a game that killed a 30-year-old company that, and it just did not make money. They were really expecting it to do fantastic and for people that were nostalgic for this franchise to show up in droves and it just didn't happen. But now in a hilarious turn of events, not even a year and a half after launch, it is already going free. <laughs> <laughs> a wise man once said But this does put a smile on my face I believe that this should be the fate of companies that compromise on their quality in order to pander to an audience or a customer base that does not exist. It is so beautiful to see when gamers stand as a united front to the point whereby it sends earthquakes and causes 30 year old gaming companies to simply crumble because gamers stood up and said we're not gonna buy this, it's not for us. It's not that we don't want politics, it's the lazy politics that are injected into the media that compromises the quality sometimes. That's the thing that we don't like. And I believe that gamers should stand up for themselves more. And companies will learn to respect gamers. It's the only way to end this entire political occupation that we seem to be under.